Hello, everyone. My name is Jose Alejandro Chavria. I am a computer engineering student at Costa Rica's Institute of Technology. And today I'll be sharing with you the results of our investigation, which is named Comparative Study, evaluating the effects of class balancing on transformer performance in the PlanNet 300K image dataset. This study is co-authored by Maria Mora and William Ulate. Uh, first of all, we are, uh, the presentation is divided into three parts. We have the problem, we have the solution, and then we have the results. So the problem, well, let's say you want to train an AI for plant recognition. Uh, so we go out there and we take a bunch of pictures of every single plant and flower we can find. We soon will find out that we have a problem and that is class imbalance. Um, what do I mean? Well, you are going to find that there are certain species that have a ton of images and certain others that have a very few images. And this, well, actually has a lot of sense. That's how plants work. There are plants that are more common than others. But there's another problem. This problem is high intraclass variability. And what this means there is that there are there is a lot of variation from image to image um, of one same species. They don't look the same, but they are. And this is where the fun part begins because we will find another problem, which is exactly the opposite, uh, low interclass variability. And that means um, we have two different species that closely resemble each other. Um, again, all of these problems are very easily explained by biology. For example, this is because these species all um, belong to the same genus. Um, normally, datasets try to avoid these kind of problems, but PlanNet does not. And it is because that's what we will see in the real world. And that's the idea of PlanNet. So it has a lot of unique images. It has a 1,081 species. It is very imbalanced. Actually, I think 80% of the classes have only, uh, yeah, 11% of the classes have, sorry, 80% of the images belong to 11% of the classes. And well, it has all these, these problems I've mentioned before. It is a very fun challenge to take on. So solution, what kind of magic do we need? Well, the title had the spoilers. We're going to use transformers. And sadly, it has nothing to do with, you know, aliens that shift, shift into cars and more to do with attention. Um, so basically some very, very clever people at Google uh, came up with this neural network architecture. And the idea was to give the ability to a neural network to pay attention to details. Uh, it was originally used for natural language processing and we developed, well, they developed a way to use it on images too. Um, and if you think about it, it is very powerful because this is the way that in which we identify um, a object. We, for example, for a, for a plant species, we look for details in the leaves or the flower or the color. And that's exactly how the uh, transformer would do it. Uh, it focuses on the, dis on the details and the relevant information of the, of the picture. And we have another trick below our sleeves, and that is class balancing. Now, um, there's two ways. We can oversample, use oversampling or undersampling. Oversampling is very simple, very straightforward. We just need to create more data. Um, but, but there's a catch. We cannot go out and take more pictures. So we have to use the data we already have. Um, for undersampling, it's a little bit more um, counterintuitive, but the idea is to avoid overfitting. And what do I mean with this? Well, when a AI model 
um, has imbalance uh, an imbalanced data set it could start paying less and less attention to other plants to other um, classes and we don't don't want this we we want every class to be as important as the other so we can use both of these techniques. Now for oversampling, we can use very basic image transformations. And these are very basic ways to alter the uh, I original image to create new information. So we can use rotation, random prop, blur, random erases, and noise and mirror flips. And these, these all are geometric transformations. And then we have color-based transformations, which are illumination and contrast. We chose these transformations because they are label safe. And that means if we apply one of these transformations to a plant species to a plant image, we will not change the species of the original image. And that's very good. That's the idea. So the results. What, what happened when we combined transformers and these transformation techniques? Well, uh, first of all, we need to, we needed to create a data set. So we created this little formula to calculate how many images we wanted to create or delete for a certain a specific class with uh, a amount of images. So basically this function tries to push, to push each class to a given objective to a balance point. Um, it is a way to control how many images we want to create, how many images we want to delete um, without overdoing it. Uh, you can take a picture or something if you want to. Um, I'm not explaining the, the formula, uh, but that's the general idea. So the results, uh, we created four novel uh, data sets for variations of these of this data set, um, each based on how many images we wanted to, to create or, and if we used undersampling or not. So for example, we have PNUS 200, that means planet undersampling 200 and 200 is the objective. Um, you can see the number of images of each data set. Actually, that one um, did a lot of undersampling. Then we have the its variation with no undersampling. And again, we have a PNUS um, 500, which has a higher objective and a bigger um, maximum of transformations to apply. Uh, why 33? Well, that's just a combination of a multiple transformations that uh, the ones I, I showed before. And as you can see, all basically all three of, of the, well, three of the five um, data sets have a similar amount of images. And then we have the US 200 that has a lot less, and then you have the NUS 500 that has a, um, a lot more. And these were the results as expected. The undersampling didn't work quite as well, but um, it is very interesting to note that having almost a little bit more than half the training time, we only lost about 4% on, on the average improvement of these metrics. Um, overall, the other three ways, the other three data sets um, gave us some improvement. For example, the next data set gave us a 2.17% uh, of um, average improvement on this on accuracy and F1 and recall and precision. Uh, for just three hours more of training time. And in the US 500 case, even with undersampling, we got a improvement and of 1.22% uh, um, 
and with just an additional hour of training. And finally, with the bigger data set, we got about 4.8% of improvement, but it did take a lot of extra hours to train. Um, we, we all, all these um, data sets were fed into the convolutional vision transformer, which is a transformer modeled by a hyping Wu and at all. Um, that would be it. Oh, yeah. Fi finally, I wanted to um, dedicate this presentation to the memory of William. As I said, he was one of uh, my fellow co-authors, and he sadly recently passed away. Uh, so I wanted to, to take the time to send my condolences to his family and, and his friends. Um, so do you have any questions? Thank you very much for having me. Uh, you have my contact information right there. Um, thank you. Thank you, Jose. I don't see any hands up in the room for questions. Um, nothing online either. Oh, that was a really interesting talk. Thank you for- um... uh, I do see one question in the chat here. Okay. Um, so you are asking if um, having the same occurrence in for all classes create bias in the sense of it wouldn't accurately represent the biological phenomenon um, that actually contains balance. It's a, it's a valid, valid question, but the idea behind balancing is to provide the AI model a better way to correctly identify that species, regardless of um, how common or not it is. Um, it is arguably that maybe <laughs> having it, I mean, it, it doesn't make that much sense, but arguably um, preserving the imbalance may lead the model to not accurately uh, recognizing that species. Um, so I, I don't, I don't think um, it uh, will um, hurt uh, the model instead of, of, of helping it to recognize better that, that species, even though it's um, far less common than the other. Uh, actually, well, uh, in, in a case, um, these uh, balancing techniques cannot create an infinite amount of images, so it would um, remain as a lesser class um, inside of the data set anyways. I think I, that may have um, answered the question. Thank you. Um, we do have one more question, and that is, in the base training with unbalanced data set, did you use class weighting? Um, no, it is just a... a Raw, um, no overturning um, training. Um, every class is weighted the same way. Um, the only difference between classes is the amount of images the model has access to. Awesome, thank you. Um, I noticed that Pierre wanted to talk or did he post his, is he the person who asked online um, Pia, did you have a question as well? Maybe we can ask you to post it in the Slack channel if you do. Oh, okay, here we go. You can hear me? Um, no. Maybe not. Oh, there. I think maybe we can hear you now, Pia. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, Jose. Thanks a lot for the presentation. I was uh, cu curious to know if uh, you 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 identify some uh, uh, key information that could be useful for other people who could take benefits of this uh, 
uh, data set for complementary experiment or strategy. So is there some missing information that you did not find could be useful uh, for your experiment? Uh, are you asking about the, the data set, um, like plan? Yes, in the, in, the, in, in the data set and it, so complementary information. So it was mainly a visual data set, but is there some complementary information, metadata to the images or uh, at the species level that could yes. be useful for you? Yes, um, uh, the, the planet data set has a, uh, I think it's a JSON file, which um, maps every single um, class with uh, the um, scientific name of the species it represents. And it also, I think it has some metadata I didn't use in the, in the experiment, but um, it does, it does include that kind of information, but it's, it's mostly just images. I, I think I did um, include the link for the paper where, where it was published. And, and yeah, that's, that's basically, you, okay. you can check that link. Okay, okay. Thank, thank you, Rose. I, I was asking that because I was uh, in, the, in the team who, who generate the, the data set. Thanks. Oh, oh, yes. Uh, oh, no, I think. <laughs> no problem. We will, we will discuss that later on Slack. Thanks a lot, Jose. Okay, okay. Um, thank you. Thank you very much for your question. Okay, great. Um, thank you. So we're going to move on to our next speaker now, uh, who, and that is Bahadir Altintas. Oh, in person, that's yeah, super. 